so now let's just think about it let's just think about it if i talk about the fact that if i talk about the fact that when we used to buy computers when we used to buy our brand new personal computer or laptop what all things we used to be most concerned about let's just think about that or maybe even you buy a phone then the most concerning things are what is the cpu involved in the computer right what kind of storage you are using whether a ssd or a hard disk drive how much and what version and what type of ram you are having right then apart from that after that we used to see if we have some good budget then maybe is there a gpu right and a few more stuff a few more stuff like good display and everything but good display and all it is like secondary right our first requirement for a good computer system should be some properties around this and why these properties we need these properties because the better the cpu and the better the ram and higher the ram better will be the processing that we are going to do in our computer and better will be the process management because all of the processes are going to be loaded inside ram right and every processing is going to be done inside cpu so we want a good cpu and we want a good ram similarly if you have a graphic intensive task then gpu is going to enhance the overall efficiency of the graphic intensive algorithm ssd and hdd we use for good storage but that's a secondary storage where we have to store files but for storage we need good size of memory right like nowadays people opt for like 8 gigs of ram 16 gigs of ram because nowadays processes are giving getting heavy so they also need good amount of ram to make sure everything is smooth but all of these things are there to make your experience smooth to make your experience smooth right but don't you think these are hardware capabilities we are software engineers right just think about it if let's say we have two users let's say we have, for the same algorithm we have two users user 1 and user 2 user 1 is having a very fast apple m1 processor right it is extremely fast comes with the latest build up technology right see up to 2. Point times 2.x times faster than their own previous processors and everything and another user is there who is having an old intel core to duo processor it's not bad but it's old that means it cannot just directly compete with the processing ca capabilities of the latest processors like i9 or m1 pro or m1 these kind of processors so let's say we have two users that are using our applications and in our application we are writing some algorithm now don't you think the user who is having a better overall configuration of the system will eventually get a better experience and the user which is having a lower configuration system let's say less ram old processor they are going to get not that good experience right so as a software engineer we cannot just make an algorithm such that we will say that okay if the user is having a good system then our algorithm will work very good if the user is having a bad system then our algorithm should be like just get a new system we can't just ask our users to do that right we can't just ask our users to upgrade every now and then because we are not writing good algorithms if we will write efficient algorithms then technically it will work almost in the similar fashion in both of the system it will not be a drastic user experience difference but if you will write bad algorithms then maybe it might work well on this but it will definitely not work well on this right this is something there right so as a software engineer it is our duty to make sure that the algorithms that we are going to make is efficient in every possible situation to whatever extent it can be it should be efficient to every possible situation right now just think about it let's say let's say let's say i write an algorithm i write an algorithm 
and I execute that algorithm in the M1 processor system, which is let's say having a 16 GB RAM, for example. And let's say in order to complete this process, in order to complete this algorithm, let's say it takes 100 milliseconds here. Good enough. And let's say the same algorithm, if I am running on this Intel core system, right? Let's say it is taking 450 milliseconds. Not that bad, but still not as fast as this, right? Now just think about it. It is evident, right? It is evident that if you run the same algorithm on two systems, then definitely M1 system is going to execute everything faster. It is having the latest technology, best built up system, better silicon technologies, better processors are involved. So it's going to run something quite fast. And Core to Duo is definitely or something older than Core to Duo or something like i3 is going to struggle a bit. So if we are judging the algorithm, let's say if we want to see whether the algorithm is working well or not, do you think, do you think this criteria of how much time the algorithm is taking in order to get executed, should, should this be a metric of measurement? What do you think? Should this be a metric of measurement or not? Because if I will, if I want to judge my algorithm, I'll run it on a faster machine. It will work very, very well. So it, it's not going to be a good way to judge the algorithm, right? Because the algorithm will run fast on a faster machine and it will run slow on a slower machine. It doesn't tell us about the nature of the algorithm. So my point here is when we are judging algorithms that which algorithm is better, we can't rely on something which is dependent on hardware, right? Because if the hardware is better, it is definitely going to execute things in a better way, in a faster way. If the hardware is not that good, it is going to somehow struggle but this thing doesn't tell us anything about how good our algorithm is so the judgment of the algorithm should be independent of independent of the hardware that we are testing on this is my first claim this is my first claim that i want to make